It's Omega and I'm back for The Witch's Moon, July 2020. And this is Freddie looking sublime. <laughs> and pretty getting pretty settled in the house right now. And um, got Freddie a big tree, a big cat tree, yet he prefers to be in front of the camera right now. And I apologize for the black splotches here. That's from um, my painting samples. I thought I would paint the place black, but I don't think that's gonna work. So I'm left with these black splotches. I think I'm gonna wallpaper and um, Freddie's helping me pick out the wallpaper. So, um, but the strangest, weirdest mercury retrograde I've ever experienced. You know, just crazy and ow, Freddie just i this is unprecedented i during this and it was the eclipse on friday and i lost my phone i mean like really lost it and i thought okay i went to a rummage sale i was trying to find some uh gardening equipment now that i need it ladders you know, lawn hoses things like that and i remember using my phone to as a navigator to get there. So I know I had my phone when I was there. And then, sorry, Freddie's like shedding and it's like itching, scratching me. So, um, and then I go uh, grocery stop, shopping, excuse me. And I noticed when I'm waiting in the aisle, waiting to get checked out, that there is no phone in my purse. And at first I wasn't alarmed because I tend to leave my phone in my car and sometimes it's actually in my purse but it's like a black hole in there so I didn't freak or anything so get my groceries go to the car look in the car don't see my phone look at my purse don't see it look under the seats don't see it look in the back don't see it and I was a little concerned and I go home and first thing I do, I go inside and I take my purse and I dump it all over. It's the only way I can get to everything I see. So didn't see anything, it must be in my car. So I look in my car and look and look and look like 10 times over. I put the seat back, put it up, lift up the mats, you know, and it was, the sun was starting to go down. So there was, but there was still sun enough and I put all the lights on, could not find it. Just absolutely could not find it. And I was just like, WTF, what am I gonna do without my phone? Like all of us, right? We depend on our phones. So I'm just perplexed. And I thought, wow, well, maybe I left at the rummage sale. I go back and no one's there. They're closed. Um, go back to the store, the grocery store. They haven't, nothing turned up. So I'm at home. And I had to suspend the phone in case someone tried to break into it and charge all kinds of stuff on it. So I have to suspend my phone and I can't reach anyone except for Facebook and email, things like that. And I'm thinking, I have insurance on it. So I sent away for a new phone and, oh God, you're really shedding, Freddie. So needless to say, I'm, you know, supposedly supposed to get my phone a couple days later, it was overnight, but it was over the weekend. So I'm without a phone. Uh, the next day I went to the rummage sale again. I spoke to the lady. She said she hadn't found it. Um, we looked for it, nothing. Wasn't surprised because I kind of remember myself taking my phone out. Go back to the grocery store, ask them again, nothing. Just really starting to freak out. And I go back to my car and it's broad daylight. And I'm like, I'm going to look again. So I look and under the passenger seat, there is my phone the whole time, like right underneath it. And I check there like 10 times. So needless to say, I got my phone. Um, I never got my replacement phone. So I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. So I had to go to uh, Verizon and have them unsuspend it and get it started. Uh, waited forever in line and, you know, the mask and the 
you know, the whole nine yards. So, and I go there and he turns on the phone and I look at it and it says one, 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 one. So I've been seeing a lot of repeating numbers lately. So, but, um, it just really, I think my intuition, intuition is peaking and, oh, this is not it. It gets better. So I, um, I was going to go to work and stop it, Freddie. A, um, active gunman decides to walk into my hospital, a hospital that I work at, just walks in and has a shotgun and pulls it out, walks in there and raises it. And the officers came running out. Um, and he raises his shotgun to, uh, the police and, uh, they shot him right there on the spot. And, uh, needless to say, he died in our, um, emergency department later. So, you know, working at the hospital, you know, no metal detector. And I've been telling, I mean, I've been saying this for the last two and a half years. We need a metal detector. We need something because someone can just walk into our hospital. It was inevitable and start open fire. And I don't want to get into any kind of discussion about gun control or anything like that. I, I don't want to make, politicize this or anything, but, um, just, we need a metal detector. And I said something, and I, I said this to him in our unit meetings, something bad is going to happen. Something really bad is going to happen. And lo and behold, around the lunar ex eclipse, there it is. And so anyway, so I'm at work and, you know, I'm like, what worse can happen, right? And it wasn't worse. I mean, it was just surreal. The whole thing was surreal. And even though we're a locked unit, you know, people can still get in. So we're kind of like sitting ducks, just like most, you know, people in hospitals. We don't know. We don't know who's going to come through our doors. So I'm on the unit and then there's, you know, one patient taking his clothes off and walking down the hall with poop in his hands. So I figured hmm, back to normal. <laughs> so that's pretty much been uh, what has been going on. So I've been just a little stressed out over that, but didn't really get to me actually. Cause I mean, we deal with death every day working in the hospital and, um, but that didn't have to happen. And then the patients were, I mean, really just on edge. And I really, really believe this mercury retrograde, it's real. And with a lunar eclipse, it just amped it up. So, you know, active gunmen, you know, patients, um, you know, higher acuity. Let's just say it was a higher acuity week in the last few days. And, um, but Freddie, he's been pretty mellow. He's actually been more mellow because he actually likes being in this house. He likes being in the yard. And I do my yard work, so you probably see on my face, I'm getting darker and getting a, a nice tan out of it. So, but anyways, let's get started. Um, sorry about rambling on, but I thought I would include you in my, you know, just crazy, this lunar eclipse and the Mercury retrograde, just, you know, didn't expect this, but I knew at some point it was going to happen, that we were going to have someone come in and start shooting up the place. So um, I told my unit manager, I said, we got lucky this time. And next time it's gonna be worse if we don't get a metal detector. So I'm gonna write to whoever I can, my congressman, you know, the brass at the hospital, whatever. And hopefully I can get our place a um, metal detector, or at least I can make some noise, I don't know. So let's get started. July 2020, the witch's moon. And um, I would have done this earlier, you know, except for the 
I was a little stressed out over the, the gunman thing. I slept the next day just hours and hours. I was just so drained. The FBI was there. The district attorney was there. Um, the news media were there. And walking out the next morning is the same entrance and exit where the gunman was. Every day I walk in, every day, every night, uh, where the blood was, walking past it, you know, so surreal. But I would have gotten sooner, but it went to my old address. And I told the post office, I, you know, filled out that packet and everything. Anyway, so I'm still getting stuff um, sent to my old address, but I think I stopped it. I notified the Witch's Moon um, Sugar Muses of my new address. They've been really good about it. And anyway, so here we go. The Witch's Moon, July. Mm, usually not as strong. Summer, my favorite. Look at this drawing. The green man. Ew, pretty. You just slobbered on me. Went through my scrubs. Okay, let's get the explanation here, the directions. And here's my oracle card. It says Serenity Lavender, Provincial Fritillary. Isn't that pretty? It's a monarch. It looks like a monarch butterfly. And it says Enchanted Blossoms. Aren't we all enchanted blossoms in our own way? <laughs> okay, let's open up the string. Just well, just package and everything. It's just like opening up presents like your birthday every time I get one of these. Okay, of raisin roots. We embrace the ever-changing seasonal energies that pass through our everyday, reminding us of the beautiful and sacred cycle that we are so deeply connected with. During a season of revitalization and action, we take time to familiarize ourselves once again with the power and beauty of the very nature that surrounds us as well as the rays of light that provide us with new energy. True, I have a lot more energy during the summer. And I guess as the sun, we can't live without it. It gives us energy. We work to become one with the wisdom of nature, granting us the ability to accept change through growth and progress. We pay homage to the goddesses and guardians of the summer season through this very special July Witch's Moon collection. Okay. So, I want to start with the artwork. And parchment paper. We all know about that. Let's see. Uh, Sol, Sol means the sun in, um, you know, in Spanish, basically Latin. That's where Spanish comes from. Uh, Book of Shadows artwork also included with collection is another beautiful piece of artwork honoring Sol or Sunna. The wonderful goddess is an appropriate energy to work with during this time as stated within the script of the peace sauna inspires us to keep going, to live energetically with enthusiasm and motivated to nourish the sacred within and without. We create meaning in our lives when we appreciate what we have, the lessons learned along the way, and time spent mindfully and wisely. Artwork by A.E. Alden. And there's another one here, green calcite. We're going to be getting that, I suspect. Beautiful drawing as well. Thank you, Adrian. And let's see what's next. Looks like a tan. At least to me it does. So we got lots of greenery. And I'll start. It's like the muslin bag, muslin bag for the tea. And here's the tea. Tears of Apollo. I think we've had that before. Ritual Herbal Tea. And mm, come on, you. Tears of Apollo Ritual Herbal Tea with Muslin Bag. This wonderful, sweet, and soothing ritual herbal tea was created with 
rebose, cranberries, orange peel, and hibiscus. Allow yourself to become filled with the ecstasy, ooh, ecstasy of music, creativity, sun, and light. Take this time to honor the sun by making music, writing in your book of shadows, or soaking in the knowledge of a well-written grimoire. Okay. Raspberry leaf. I feel like this is a repeat for some reason of something we've had before. Maybe not all at once. Um, a very feminine and fruitful, here it is. And I really appreciate the, the writing up here. Uh, you know, the script is really pretty, but before we didn't have on top, it was just really hard to decipher what it was. So now I appreciate the witch's moon um, putting the, you know, a better, easier to read, let's say it, spelling. Raspberry leaf, a very feminine and fruitful addition to your summer rituals. The raspberry leaf carries a wonderful, protective, and charming qualities. Add it to sachet, sachets, or sachets to hang near your gatherings and celebrations or place among your green man altar. I have a feeling we're going to be getting some kind of green man. Okay. And the next one is orange peel. Very apropos for summer. Orange peel, a wonderful addition to many prosperity spells. The orange peel carries the ability to bestow good luck and fortune upon the user, also known as a lucky charm. Orange peels can be placed in your pocket or incorporated within a um, sachet to take with you during a job interviews or application process. And I think there's another one. There's something in here. It looks kind of good. There's another herb. Well, I guess not. Okay. Um, this looks like part of an aura spray. I'm going to dig for that. Saul. Call Saul. <laughs> and did I tell you these things came in really handy when I moved? It's great. I packed things up so nicely, nothing broke. I'm thinking this is going to smell really good. Right, Freddy? What do you say, Freddy? See how much calmer he is? See how he's like, like not walking and video bombing me and stuff? He's really calmer. I love it. The new Freddy. Mmm. Smells like lemon. And maybe a little orange. I don't know, but definitely lemon. What does it say? Soul Ritual Aura Spray. We are thrilled to be able to introduce our Soul Ritual Aura Spray within this very special collection. It's been created with the intention of providing the energetic qualities of the sun into your environment. We recommend using this Aura Spray during times of stagnation where you may feel thoughts and energies leaving you, opening yourself to the emotions of hope. As you work with this spray, allow your energetic body to feel motivated to take action toward, toward positive change. We have created this ore spray with the oils of lemon, lemon grass, sweet orange, okay, there's the orange, and spe special mixture of our Actum Magical Oil from our personal cabinet of witchery. Shake well before using. Um, some people may be more sensitive than others. Oh, yada, 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 you guys know. Okay, it's like a spell candle, which I always enjoy. Um, someone mentioned in the comments and actually concurred with me that the oils, it seems like we get a lot of oils and I can't use them up fast enough. I have so many oils and I fear that some of them have turned rancid because I just haven't used them. I appreciate them very much. I think they're great and high, you know, high quality. I love them, but I just, it's like too much of a good thing for me. So I'm glad we got the ritual spray. I really appreciate that, which is moon. 
And here's a beautiful yellow candle. These wax, of course, thank you. I would like to see from Witch's Moon. You guys tell me if you agree or if you have other suggestions for them. I would like to see a candle holder. I know we've had one before, but like a pair, you know, that are the same that can hold the, these beeswax candles because either I have to, you know, light the bottom and stick it on something. Um, I have one that we've, we've been given, I think one, and I think it's gold tone, but I would like another one when I have more than one candle. I think that would be really great. So the spell candle, hand rolled and anointed golden gratitude spell candle. Freddie, your nose is cold and wet. Hand rolled and anointed this candle with the intention of providing you with a celebrate celebratory offering. Um, blessings upon us this season. Take the time to pronounce your gratitude for current gifts as well as future manifestations. Tokens of appreciation can be placed on or around the candle while lit, allowing you to provide specific intentions. Although this candle does not include a separate candle spell, the affirmation used and created this candle goes as follows. Let my gratitude yet, well, there's like an incantation to it. Right, Freddie? I love this new Freddy. Hey, Freddy, don't you want to be on camera? You can see his tail, that's about it. Flip flopping. He'll be back. Okay, lemongrass rope incense. Hmm. Here it is. Morning glow. Oh, lemongrass ritual rope incense. Sorry for the glare. Handmade in Nepal, this wonderfully fragrant set of ritual rope incense is a great addition to any ritual that requires clear and bright energies as you light the red tip and then blow out. Place one rope incense on a plate or within a small fire safe dish to allow the smoke to dance throughout your space. Next is probably the calcite in this wonderful green bag. Beautiful, I love green. Look how shimmery that is. I love green. And here it is. It's got like pieces coming off it, but you know, that happens goes a long way it goes on these long journeys <laughs> green calcite stone we are thrilled to include a green calcite stone within this collection originating from brazil carries such beneficial properties as a wonderful daily companion as stated with the green calcite Book of Shadows artwork. Soothes distress and calms anger. I think that would have been nice to help certain incidences. Okay, nurtures goodwill and compassion. I mean, I feel really badly for the gunman. And I think it was something he wanted to die by police. I think it was planned. And, um, he was not a patient of a hospital, but still, a person died, and it's and it's sad that um, he felt that desperate. And here is the salt glow, morning glow. Ooh, it smells great. Uh, morning glow sacred salt um, with the intention of taking advantage of the rising sun. It's to be used in the morning ritual, allowing you to fully absorb the energetic opportunities of the coming day. 
Allow your inner chatter to slowly stop cluttering your emotions as you resonate with the earthly ingredients of the sacred salt. Take the time to mentally review the blessings and gifts that have been bestowed upon you. And there are positive steps that can be taken this day to bring you closer to your goals. We've enchanted this sacred salt with bergamot, lemongrass, sage oils, as well as St. John's wort, raspberry leaf, and marigold herbs. Nice. I love the salts. Appreciate the aura spray. Really do. Different incense. And always, you know, this is, a, I mean, a sizable chunk, you know, of this rock, this crystal. Amazing. I mean, my whole, it takes my whole fist to surround it. So I, I like this big, big rock, this green calcite. Okay. And looks like we got, oh, we got oil too. Not instead of, not in lieu of, but in addition. Oh, there's more, did, oh, there's more artwork. I'm sorry. I, it's like sitting right on my lap and I forgot. Well, let me do the oil first. Uh, come on, you. In the first and second solar crown magical anointing oil probably has similar ingredients to the salt mm -hmm. smells like it well it smells, smells more herbal almost like eucalyptus of enhancing the movement within your current realities Represents a crown of abundance, optimism, and joy, urging you to take positive action during times of chaos and confusion. As you anoint your magical tools and skin, visualize your auric field opening to a state of ease and understanding um, that we drop preconceived judgments about what we think we may know what's in it. Lemongrass, basil, and bay oils. Okay, that's the herbal part. Lemon peel, orange peel, rosemary, and olive leaves. Okay. And of course, the Lemurian quartz is in there. Okay. We're getting close. Getting close. I love the incense sticks. I've been burning a lot of them. Ooh, and Protetra. I love this. I love Celtic art. I love just pretty much everything Celtic. This is really nice. I really like this. You know, I'm not big on jewelry, but I like this. Um, fine pewter triquetra with chain. I appreciate the chain too. Um, this beautiful fine pewter triquetra tri pendant has been locally crafted with pure intentions, has been a symbol dating back to as early as 500 BCE. And BCE, in case you guys, most of you know, but I'll just say it anyways. Um, BC used to be, it used to mean before Christ. And AD was um, Aldo Domini, which meant the year of our Lord. So anything after was 80, but pagans and as well in the Jewish religion, we've, we've done this. We had it BCE, which means before common era. And that's what a lot of pagans have adopted as well. And used by many cultures to represent the power of threes. Three is actually one of my numbers. I've been seeing a lot of 333s, a lot of repeating numbers, but three, it just, I feel comfortable for some reason with three. And it comes from the Celts, Wiccans, and Neo Pagans. Three form design symbolizes, among the other representation, the maiden mother crone, as well as the wisdom of the triple goddess. Also resonates with life, death, and rebirth. Corresponds with the sacred cycle of life. 
nice. And last but not least, this is black. Ooh. Oh. Black. Looks like it has like pine cones on it and a ram's horn. We've had something like this before, like the Holly King during um like December. Summer Green Man. Yeah, the Green Man. We've had something like that. The Green... Oh. What do you think, Freddie? He's just interested. Don't eat that. No. Summer Green Man plaque. It has been made of cold case resin, hand-painted by skilled artisans, covered with the flourishing leaves and berries. Representation of the Green Man is a great addition to your litha, summer altar has been represented in ancient rituals and mythology dating back thousands of years spanning a variety of cultures and still maintains the leafy green face to this day among the many meanings and information that's been published about the lore of the green man there is one recurring of truth it represents our intimate connection with a seasonal cycle of each year um, resonating with the deep wisdom of continual death and rebirth, he becomes alive with the coming of the spring, watching over the growing nature, sprouting leaves, guarding over the forest until winter captures him once again. Even though the cold winter months, the spirit of the green man is felt. Representation of both man and nature seamlessly combined resonates so intimately with our practices and rituals. Both of these qualities relying on one another for survival and growth. And as we work with the element of earth through each season, we focus on the spiritual cycle of letting go and gaining during the wanting and waxing of each year. Practices are even represented down to each day as the sun rises in the morning, eventually falling in the evening. This specific re representation of the green man brings energies of growth and abundance into our sacred space, pre um, presenting himself during the time of year where we celebrate our victories with friends and family. We show our grateful spirit for the blessings that have showered upon us during the winter months. Also a time of perfect opportunity to connect with nature spirits, calling upon them and working with their favorable, favorable energies Overall, the green man brings us clo closer to nature where we are called to be. His energies remind us of our connection and responsibility of life that is found within the soils and sprouts of each natural being. As you bring, hang this plaque in your sacred space, take the time to connect with the very special energy that surrounds this time of year. And there's one more piece of artwork beautiful of course like a goddess with horses and look at this yellow I love yellow too I love yellow and green also included within this collection is another beautiful piece of artwork honoring oh I think I already read that for another one. Anyways, you guys, well, I'll read it again. Honoring soul or sona, this wonderful goddess is an appropriate energy to work with during this time. Um, as stated within the script of the piece, sona inspires us to keep going, to live energetically with enthusiasm and motivated to nourish the sacred within and without. We create meaning in our lives when we appreciate what we have. The lessons learned along the way and time spent mindfully and wisely. Okay, so I will show everything again. So you have this beautiful artwork, three pieces. Saul, the green man. The bee, I love bees. I got a, not a beehive, but um, I was at a bookstore 
and not your average bookstore. It has like a lot of like out of print books and I dropped like over a hundred bucks and it's 150 bucks today just on books. Um, but I also bought a bee home and it's like a little wooden house and it has little holes in it so bees can find a home. So I've been very one with nature now that I have a yard. Um, actually mowed a lawn for the first time a couple weeks ago and um, which was kind of fun. And um, I, I'm sure it will lose its you know, magic and its newness, but I liked it. And I can say even, you know, Freddie has felt it. I felt it too. I feel, I don't know if the word is calmer, but happier just being out in nature, just, just sitting under my own trees and being out in the daytime, the night, you know, I'm gardening. I've planted in the garden mint, basil, and oregano so far. And it's flourishing. It's great. And it just feels so good. It's just, um, and I think it's helped me cope and kind of bounce back from these crazy times. And, you know, which could have been, it was already a tragedy because a person died, was killed, but it could have been a lot worse. So, you know, appreciate every moment and especially appreciate people in your life because you never know when your number's up. It can happen at any time, you know, so tell people in your life that you love them, you know, your children, your pets. Freddie is my best friend. Um your parents, if they're still alive, even if they're not alive. I mean, I still talk to my parents. They've, my father's been dead for years and my mother died in 2014, but I still talk to them and I know they're around me. You know, your siblings, your significant other, your friends, you know, just cherish, cherish the times, even the bad times. Because I notice I look back on the bad, what I thought were bad times in my life. Some of them were pretty intense and pretty messed up, but there was always something that was good. There was all that, you know, tinged with some kind of happiness, whether it was a cup of tea or being with your friends or just relaxing or, you know, having a younger, more youthful appearance. We all get older. <laughs> You know, I look back on pictures of myself even five years ago and I was like, gosh, I thought I looked ugly in this picture. What was I thinking? And I was like that when I, especially when I was younger, like in high school, my young adulthood and I'd be like, oh, don't take my picture. I look horrible. And then years later, I look back at the picture and I was like, what was I thinking? I look pretty good. So I don't know. I don't know if that's just unique to myself or if others, you know, have that as well. Anyways, so this piece of art, the green calcite and this huge, I think a huge substantial rock here. You get the orange peel, the raspberry leaf, the delicious smelling Sol Aura Spray, and the oil, the rope incense, lemongrass incense, the wonderful, beautiful, very much appreciated yellow um, candle, the bath salts, and this one I guess the instructions are to use in the morning or during the day. This lovely, Triquetra or triquetra, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Pewter. Oh, does it say something in the back? Okay, and I gotta find out what it says. Um, it says something in the back, and I don't know. I can't read it from here because it's small writing, and my sight isn't as good. Talk about getting older. My sight's not quite as good as it used to be. But this is, if you guys can make it out, or if you have it yourself. This is what it says. It's in a circle. 
and then your own Oracle card. I think these are suitable for framing too. I think they're quite lovely. And this beautiful green man, which looks more like bronze man, which is fine. I love bronze, I love gold. And the tea. And I guess that's it for the Witch's Moon, July 2020. Tell me what you guys think about this. If you like this video, give me, give Freddie and I a thumbs up and subscribe and comment below. Uh, what do you guys think of this box? I do have um, Midnight Muses coming up. It turns out I wasn't getting the boxes once they started making the deluxe box because you were supposed to actually go back and kind of renew, like start it all over the subscription, which I didn't do. I thought it would be automatic, but it wasn't. And I regret that because I probably missed out on some good stuff and um, it's painful. <laughs> I don't wanna look at what I missed, I hate that. So maybe ignorance is bliss for me, but, um, oh, I got, a new wire for my braces. So uh, they showed me scans, pictures of my teeth. And wow, what a difference. I didn't notice. My gum line is completely straight. This is almost straight, my bottom teeth. They were all crowded before. And my it seems like my jaw is widening. Like it's not quite as narrow. So it's just expanding. And it's fitting the upper part of my face more. But my orthodontist said, you know, just wait um, till after we put the sure fit wire in, and you'll really see, you know, more. So hopefully I won't have to wear this any longer than a year, hopefully less, maybe nine months if I can get away with it. Because it is uncomfortable and it interferes with my speech. I am getting used to it, but anyways. Um, glad to be here uh just happy and what happened you know recently kind of put everything in perspective for me just grateful for the things that i have and the sim simple things in life like going out in nature makes a huge difference no matter you know how stressed you are just go out to a park. It's a beautiful time of year. At night, it's beautiful too. I mean, don't go alone if you're not sure of your surroundings at night, bring someone with you. But I love summer nights and I love this time of year. It's just magical to me. And I tend to feel better emotionally and mentally because of the sun. I get this seasonal affect disorder and in the winter time, I'm just, um, I get depressed because the lack of sunlight and lack of vitamin D. So I have to take supplements and use my light box, but it's not, a, it's not really the same as the sun, the natural sun. And I'm just so like energized this time of year. I feel really good. And I don't know what else to say. Glad I'm here. And I do have two more boxes. Midnight Muses is coming soon. And well, that one is yet to come. And I have um, the Witch's Roots, but um, I don't have time because I have to head off to work. And um, so this is Omega signing off, Freddie and I. And Freddie, look how calm he is. He's falling asleep. Ah! <laughs> so. Until next time, this is Omega and Freddie signing off. Bye.